Hey, guess what? It's time for VoiceOver Body Shop one more time. And our guest tonight is Harlan Hogan. You can wave, Harlan. There you go. Okay, good. We got lots of great stuff. We got. Uh, we can talk about uh, the great stuff he does with VoiceOver Essentials. If you've got a question, throw it in the chat room. Mike Merlino is in there, and he's going to relay those questions to us a little bit later on. As Harlan speaks, you're going to come up with that stuff. So stay tuned. We got VoiceOver Body Shop coming up right now. Two yeah. men, twin sons from different mothers, with a passion for voiceover recording technology and the desire to make recording easy for voice actors everywhere. Together, in one place. George Whittem, the home studio engineer to the stars, a Virginia Tech grad with an unmatched knowledge of all the latest gear and technology in voiceover today. Dan Leonard, the home studio master, a voice actor with over 30 years experience in broadcasting and recording, and a no-holds-barred, myth-busting attitude for teaching you how easy it is, together, to bring you all the latest technology, today's voiceover superstars, and leading the discussion on how to make the most of your voiceover business. This is VoiceOver Body Shop. VoiceOver Body Shop is brought to you by VoiceOverEssentials.com, home of Harlan Hogan's signature products. Source elements, remote connections made even easier. VO2GoGo.com, everything you need to be a successful voiceover artist. J. Michael Collins Demos, award-winning demo production. VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your voiceover website won't be a pain in the butt. And VoiceOver Extra, your daily resource for VO success. And now, live from their super secret multimedia studio in Sherman Oaks, California, here are George Whittem and Dan Leonard. Hey there, I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver. Body Shop. Or VO BS. Yes. All right. Is my echo convincing? Every convincing. week I do that. Convincing. I go B D N S like that. Does anybody notice? They may. Is anybody out there? <laughs> Is there anybody out there? Anyway. Uh, oh, what a great weekend I had in San Francisco. Oh man, I missed out. Oh, the mini con. It was great. I was swinging in a cloud. Ah, look I, it up. I was I was hanging with friends I hadn't seen in a long time. Nice. And it was it was great. It was a great time. You get to go to a Volvo mini con, do it. Lots of fun. How many people would you get? I guess? think we had 50? like 50 people there. Yeah, that's a nice You know, thing. and some fairly prominent people. With 50 and people, everybody pretty much gets to talk to each other. It was, I, that's the whole point. Right. It's more intimate than, say, one of these, you know, you know, 1,000 member, you know, yeah. conferences. Do they, do they, do they purposely limit it? Is there like a cutoff 50? Yes. Or, yeah. Yeah. Pretty much. You know, and it was just for, you know, we do them regionally. So it makes it easier for people to, uh, to attend i would totally have gone but i'm going to maker fair i know three weeks it's san francisco again, God, i almost so. want to go with you anyway it's cool one of these years i'll go with you anyway tonight on our show we have a great guest uh, harlan hogan we'll get mm -hmm. to him in just a second and uh also again if you've got a question for harlan because you know who he is uh ask it in the chat room or on our facebook page if you happen to be watching there and of course if you have a home studio tech question george and i would also like to get those as well we would please send them in because we have lots of question time got lots of time to dedicate to that that's stuff. right but we also got topics that we want to talk about too yep. so anyway let me introduce our guest because without him this show wouldn't be here honestly truly uh, he was truly. he's been our sponsor since show number one which if you were watching last week you saw what that you was saw like a clip of that yeah um anyway he is a uh a legend in in our business because he's been in the voiceover business a long time. He hates it when you say that. I know that's why I said it. And uh, he is in the town of Great Barrington, Illinois, which is Chicago. Uh, welcome to our show, Harlan Hogan. Hey, there he is. <laughs> hey, Harlan, legend. Yes, you're just about to check out. Okay, <laughs> that's why I said legend. Anyway, you know it's, not, you know, it's really nice. What's Iconic. that? Iconic is really nice. I, okay, let me. You no, know you're already one foot Iconic. in the grave. Iconic. All right, yeah. Yeah. that anyway. works for me. 
<laughs> anyway, welcome to the show. You, you've been with hey. us before. It's always great talking to you. And, uh, like you know, we only get to meet personally every now and again. Like, how yeah. often do I get to Chicago? How often do you get to Chicago? Not nearly enough. Okay, so you need to come out here and be on the set with us. I know, I know. It should have come out last week when it was snowing. Yeah, it was perfect. <laughs> if that if that wasn't motivation enough, I mean, come on. I now. know. Yeah. But you know, we we, we know you from uh, you know from VoiceOverEssentials.com and, and some of your voiceover work and, and stuff. But you're you're a you're a pre home studio voice actor. I mean, you were doing this before all this home studio stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, what was the early part of your career like? How did you get started in it? In the business at all? And yeah. Early or the home studio end of it? No, no. Or before, no. Pre-home studio. When, oh, pre-home studio. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, I I uh, put myself basically through college in working in a radio station. And I got a BFA in theater. And so I was really a theater rat, you know. From the time I was about nine or ten years old, you had the radio yeah. and the theater. I mean, that's a really good basis for voice Which acting. Was have actually, you know, if you could plan stuff up down the road, it was a pretty good idea. But I don't know. I just wait yeah. to make a book. And uh, you know, I like I like being on the air. I like the microphones and stuff. And then I left there, and I worked in radio a little bit. Got bored, like most people, and realized there are like three people in the world that make a buck at it. <laughs> and, that many. Uh, you know, all my friends who went to college were actually working, <laughs> like with real jobs, rather than if you get the other. If you ever work radio, you know you don't get paid much. No, but you had these perks like perks, uh, right. like uh, tire trades and gas trades and I'm albums. Trying to, trying to get a raise at this radio station one time, and I said, "Station manager, I was leaving, going to Peoria, which is a much bigger town than Bloomington." And he said, "Well, our, our, okay, we don't want you to leave. Uh, uh, you got a tire trade? Yeah." <laughs> uh, hey you like pizzas yeah i'll get you one every night i said john i i like pizzas i don't want to become one <laughs> but but he did you know i did some radio down in indiana and i thought i gotta get a real job so i tried <laughs> several i'm the world's worst computer salesman who ever lived i wouldn't know fortran from cobol but I got a job trying to sell computers. I was terrible. Worked in advertising for a while. Pretty bad. Finally, I was about 28, 29, I thought. I was doing community theater all over the place, which I loved. Which pays well, too, doesn't it? Oh, that pays well, too. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> I meet a lot of interesting people. And I finally did, you know, you do that epiphany at some point in your life when you say, okay, it's not a dress rehearsal. I got to give this a shot. I've got to try. And when I worked at J. Walter Thompson in advertising, I did see people that came in and did voice stuff and i did a lot of scratch tracks there because they knew i'd been a radio so that was kind of intriguing but when i started it was not like i'm gonna do voiceover i was just want to be an actor and you know one thing led to another and of course i also figured out pretty quickly it was a really busy time here and you could do 10 or 12 jobs in a day you couldn't do an on-camera job <laughs> 12 of them in a day and you had to have wardrobe and memorize stuff and all of that and you could show up with a, pick up a piece of paper reading a microphone and make some money so even in the depths of my ignorance i figured i like this voiceover stuff so that's that's you know I, and i just concentrated on that and uh it was a great crowd of people here we had so much fun yeah it's, it was well, a smaller it, group. You dealt directly with the clients. We didn't go through agents or anything, the voiceover people. And, and you know, it, it really, the first professional, real voiceover gig I had, I got from another voiceover actor who called me up. And he said, Jim Dolan's producing some stuff at Streeterville Studios, and he needs another young guy, and I recommended you. I mean, that's how the business was then. It was yeah. fun. That's, ball. that's how it works. So and so you, you were called into studios, and, 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 that, and that's pretty much it. For till about when? When did that really change? Oh, I want to say, you know, that's in it. I really have not tied that in very well in my mind. But I, you know, twelve years ago, fifteen, somewhere, somewhere in there, I started recording stuff at home, kind of by accident. A guy called me up. His name was George Little, and uh, I was doing some political stuff already then. And he introduced himself on the phone. He said, I know your work. You have no internet or anything, guys. I mean, this is a phone call, right? He said, I would love to use you, Harlan. And I can afford to pay the union rates, but I just can't afford the studio costs in Chicago. 
uh, they're just, it's just out of my budget. So I end up using this jockeys down here. And I mean, just, is there any way we could work together? And I said, yeah. Hey, I got a reel-to-reel tape recorder, baby. You know, we're, now for the younger people watching, that's a big plastic thing with tape that goes around and around, kind of like a record. Yeah. Um, and I had, I don't know, sure, microphone of some kind, and I started recording from home. And I would, you know, we would do FedEx, and then eventually it went to digital audio tape. And then eventually it went to cutting CDs. So I kind of did that before and very many people did. And um, as I did more political stuff, I was on the road more. I remember being in LA with my first book. And it was a book signing and everybody that had a voice of a book was there. And it was, yeah, it was fun. It was exciting. Steve Schatzberg was, became a friend of mine and said, hey, Harlan, show them your, your studio that you take on the road. And there's about 150 people. They're mainly from LA. And I had the, the Sony digital audio tape and a little microphone and a little adapter, a pair of headphones. And so I said, I, I, can, I can do auditions with this, you know, out here in my hotel room. And I've got a few clients I can do stuff for. And I think we're all going to go to the point where we're in, certainly doing our auditions at home. And I got laughter. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> laughter. <laughs> so once in a while, you're right. Not often, but I was right. You were a visionary. But what can we say? Internet. I mean, the internet came along, and now we could just send MP3s, and it just, as you all know, it just completely changed. I love the fact I can, you know, go in my little whisper room here and do stuff, but I really do miss the people because they were all characters, with the exception of myself. But everybody involved in voice seemed like they were <laughs> nuts and fun. And it was like a club, you know, it was, it was a great time. And advertising here was huge. That was a lot of packaged goods. So you had places like Leo Burnett and J. Walter Thompson and Foot Cone and Belding cranking out stuff for Secret Deodorant and Raid and Head and Shoulders and, and you know, all of that commercial stuff was being done here. Right. Well, you, you, had, you had Sears, uh, you had uh, 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 Spiegel catalogers in Chicago. Mm-hmm. All those things were there. I mean, that was really yeah. the big retail center for yeah, uh, craft country. food. You had S.C. Johnson Wax up in up in the Milwaukee area, and it was it was really going down. It was just you know hoondoo. So I you know I was lucky. I, I just happened to hit it at the right time because voices, the guys who were working when I was getting in the business, first of all, were very nice to me because they didn't consider me a threat. <laughs> And uh, because I was young, you know, I was young and, and that they were shifting from the big, deep mellifluous voices, you know, to somebody who maybe sounded like a real person. And uh, it was just dumb luck timing on my part, honestly. Yeah. Some of us, you know, sometimes it's all in the timing. It's always in yeah. the timing. Yeah. 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 That's a lot. Yeah, yeah. I know. I mean, how many times have we heard the story? I just happened to come into the studio for an audition and they're like, oh, we've got this thing. Can you do this? get the opportunity you got to deliver i was yep. in the studio yeah. and quincy jones came in yeah. the second yeah. engineer was sick that day and <laughs> here you have yeah. it yeah exactly the story yeah. of every it's, great it's engineer so, i've ever it, read it does it definitely does happen it just happened to be there hey you come here <laughs> that's right <laughs> hey if you're just joining us our guest is the one and only harlan hogan from voiceoveressentials.com if you've got a question for him Throw it in the chat room right now. We'd be love to get that question to him because he has the answers to everything. Uh, so, what prompted you? Well, I'm it, iconic. I there you go. <laughs> or ironic. Go ahead. <laughs> or both. Or ironically iconic. Uh, anyhow, what prompted you? I mean, now, now this is there's a good span of time here. I mean, you had vo- when did you start VoiceOverEssentials.com, and what prompted you to start okay. retailing that way? That's about, I'm going to say about seven years ago. How long have you guys been on? Eight. Eight. So, okay. Well, you were already eight. doing it by that time. I was so. always, so t- let's say 10. I'm terrible on these things. <laughs> Without, thank God I have two sons because then I have some anchors where I can go, let's say Jamie was eight. <laughs> right. Was, you know, right? Yeah. That's, the only way I can that's what kids yeah. are for. Yeah. Milestones. That's what kids are for. Exactly. That's, that's about it. Um, <laughs> so, let's say 10 years ago or so um, that that came along. It came about, totally by accident and and i don't want to disparage actors in any way because i consider myself an actor and and i have been kind of 
proud of the fact that with the exception, when I first started out, I went back and I worked part-time in a radio station, mainly to get access to the studio so I could make demos. So it was, it was a good move. And uh, did that for a couple of years under a slightly different name. And uh, other than that, I've never really had to have a second job, a real job. In particular, I haven't had to work retail. So 30 odd years into that wonderful feeling of, you know, I'm damn lucky and I've never had to work retail. I decide to open an online store. <laughs> what the Makes hell? complete sense. <laughs> I'm in retail, <laughs> you know, so go figure. But that happened because mainly because it goes back to being able to record either at home or on the road. And as my political business grew, and that's, as you guys know, is very quick turnaround. And you, you don't want to not be available because it's, it's not that they're mean or cruel, but if you're not available, there's 15 other guys they can go to. And once you're on a campaign, particularly a big campaign, you want to stay on it. And they're inclined to keep you. I've noticed with most political producers, they're very, very, very superstitious. It's a very mm. interesting Thing. so they don't want to shift and if the, if the client isn't saying you know i really hate that guy they want to keep that guy or that girl on it so the biggest one that when it really struck me i came out to to um, vegas with jeff fisher who's my co-author on the two studio books and sure as heck i get the call hey harlan we need to and i could do it but I had to go to that studio. I can't remember the name of it in Vegas, which is 45 minutes from downtown, at least. You can even get out of downtown there because I think George and I have been in a car in Vegas for like an hour and a half trying to get to a restaurant years back. Oh, yeah. <laughs> George picked this up and we're like, are we going to get there? <laughs> what the hell? The traffic is crazy. So I went all the way out to the studio. And I've always felt that if you are out of town, it's not really kosher to say to the client, oh, I want you to pay for the studio because I'm out of town. It's like you're on vacation or you're out doing a book signing or something, and she should pick that up. Um, some will insist on paying it, but most will go, oh, okay, I understand. So I get there, dude, and God, the bill was outrageous. I mean, it's five or six hundred bucks, it's more than I'm making on the spots. But I did make my client happy, and I mentioned to Jeff Fisher, you know, I got to find a way, you know, to record on the road. I and mean, I've tried the pillows and stuff, and yeah. said, you know, oh, oh, you you should take a look at Douglas Spotted Eagle's box. I said, what's that? He said, well, I got a video of this thing. He was in a Douglas is a very good singer, acoustic guitar player, and he was on some kind of a video shoot. And he needed to do some tracks. And the soundstage was no good. So he went to his hotel room. That sounded terrible. But there was some acoustic foam around and there was some foam pour. So he made a box with duct tape. He had this idea, if I put the microphone in there, it'll hear the acoustic foam. And he said, it sounded great. I said, oh, that's cool. I said, I'll play with that idea. I talked to Douglas. I said, hey, you know, I think I might want to develop this or you know, at least write up an article or something. Are, are you have any patent on it? Are you going to, oh, no, 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 no. I mean, he had no interest in anything other than, yeah, it really works well, Harlan. You just, you know, trick the microphone into hearing an acoustic space. It doesn't have to be human sized. So that's really where it started. And I wrote up an article, how to record on the road on the cheap, just for fun, because I was fiddling around with various boxes I could find at the container store and then got some acoustic foam, sent it out, no intention of ever doing it. Pretty quickly had a lot of people say, well, where can I buy one of these things? And I said, you can't. I taught you how to make them. Right. Well, yeah. <laughs> Isn't that funny? You give it away and then they want to pay for it. That's right. People yeah. are insane. <laughs> well, and part of it was, as you guys know, good acoustic foam is expensive and you right. got to buy a pretty big sheet of it so you could make four or five yeah. of these things out of sheet and that was part of it and finally you know finally it dawns on me you know if these people really want to buy one of these maybe i ought to make some <laughs> so i made 10 sold them in a day i'm serious I'm gone and i hi hi <laughs> look who came in <laughs> acoustical treatment <laughs> dog. walking human walking acoustic treatment <laughs> Boy, 
Uh, okay, stay. You can stay. Yeah. So anyway, that that was that was the genesis of it. Yeah. And then when people started buying them, I wanted to make them more professionally, and I found a company that would do that. And then kind of looked at it and thought, well, what what else? Well, people always ask about microphones. What should I choose? Pie check. Uh, you know, that's the second question. The first question is, can can you get me an agent? And the second one is, what microphone what should I use? Yeah, we, we get we get that one a lot. What's the best microphone for voiceover? I've heard that one. Yeah, we yeah. We, we hear it like maybe three four times a day. But yeah. you know, but what went into? I mean, so we're talking about the VO one A uh, Harlan Hogan right. Signature Series microphone. What went into the development of that? Because it's really the only voiceover specific microphone. The rest of them were all designed for Celine Dion and, and Quincy Jones and the rest of them. Yeah. Yeah. They yeah. are. I mean, I, I love descriptions of microphones like sounds great on piano, drums, and voice. No. no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. No, it does not. <laughs> Uh, but I had the same thing, like, what do I recommend or whatever? And I, again, with Jeff Fisher's advice, I said, yeah, to, to get, develop a mic. And that's been the philosophy for me on this stuff. If I can't find a way to make it in some way different or better, I'm not going to do it because there's plenty of gear out there. And, uh, that, that's what I always look for. If I can't find some way to make it more specific, more usable to voiceover people or podcasters or people who are voice workers. And by the way, I've sold a, a number of porta booths to people in the <coughs> telephone sex business. <laughs> hey, what, whatever works. Well, you know, it's got to be pretty. If you think about it, I'm not going to do a demonstration, but if you've got <laughs> seven or eight people all talking into headsets, uh, pretending to be excited about some event, you, you really don't want bleed through that so, no. <laughs> yeah, make, make that's sense. actually a market um but with the mic you know i thought okay well what what's who's you first of all there's a little question of who's using this microphone is it a professional recording engineer or someone at home mm. it's someone at home what's their experience level um oftentimes because of how the business changed i've met a lot of people who've never been in a recording studio in their life they have no training. They never worked around a microphone. They don't know what part of it to talk into. They're recovering accountants, essentially. Yeah. <laughs> and, and so I'm thinking, okay, what are some of the problems? Some of the problems are if the microphone is complicated, it's got roll-off switches and high pad, low pad, all this stuff that a pro can do, you know, knows what it is. Things like that. I wanted to keep the cost really reasonable. Uh I wanted to make sure I could, if I could get them to get a microphone with a good mic cable, because as you guys know, so often people buy a nice expensive microphone and put a crappy cable on it. You can't understand why it doesn't sound good. Mm -hmm. So there were a bunch of little things they had, and Jeff knew somebody at MXL, so I talked to them. I also talked to three other microphone companies, very well-known mics, and explained what I did, and I wanted to create this microphone the other three big guys said just pick out one of our mics you like and we'll put your name on it <laughs> right right and i said no that's not what i'm trying to do here i mean yeah. I, I could take a felt pen and write my name on it, <laughs> but that doesn't make it my mic so mxl was great i mean they were just coming out of kind of a reputation of being you know hmm, okay and they wanted, and they were very, very cooperative with me and, and worked with it. It's wired with Megami. It's got great big fits at it. Uh, I wanted to soften to a degree the proximity effect because if you don't know what it is, you can misuse it right away, right? And you've never had, one of the reasons I like you guys so much is you're, you're supplanting the, the great gift I had and people my age had of having recording engineers who taught us how to work the mics. I know Dan's done some great stuff with the Porter Group Pro and like a 416. And most people don't have you guys. And we don't, you know, you walk in the studio and they say, hey, how are, hey, how are, back up here and I'm going to angle the mic here. And, you know, you, you learn from them. And unfortunately, most people don't have that anymore. So that was the major thing is, is to just make this a voice over design microphone from the get-go with really good quality components. It comes with a mic cable, it comes with a shock mount, comes with every damn thing, including little replacements for those little rubber things that you can never find, um, you know, on the shock mount. Absolutely. 
And, you know, then the headphones came and other things came. And uh, I've had I've had a ball. It, it's been great. It's been great fun. And to kind of think through and see what we could do to make it better, make it interesting. All right. Well, if you're just joining us once again, our guest is Harlan Hogan from voiceoveressentials.com. And we're talking about some of the stuff that, you know, that he created for uh, there and uh, for retail at Voice Over Essentials. And again, if you've got a question for Harlem, now would be a really good time to get it into our chat room and we can ask him in the next segment. Plus, he has some stuff that he wants to talk about us, uh, talk to us about in just a couple of minutes. So stay tuned. We'll be right back with Harlan Hogan here on Voice Over Body Shop. In a world of audio, two men knew what they were doing, or at least they have you convinced. They put the BS and VOBS.TV. Hey, you've heard about the amazing ACX Masterclass, and here's David H. Lawrence the 17th with an amazing offer for VOBS viewers. Thank you so much, sir. I'm David H. Lawrence the 17th, and I teach a class called the ACX Masterclass. Now, if you're a regular VOBS viewer, you probably would love to make audiobooks, right? But you don't know how to get started. Maybe you've created a profile on ACX but never really did anything with it, or maybe you tried but you saw all these low pay or no pay projects you knew you weren't gonna make money with, I get it and I can help you. The ACX Masterclass is a four week intensive training course that shows you how to produce audiobooks efficiently and elegantly and also how to manage ACX projects and deal with rights holders. It's been really, really effective for our students. They are, over the last four years or so, responsible for nearly 3,000 books on Audible that are on sale right now on audible.com having been made via ACX. That's one out of every 30 books on Audible, right? So we're gonna be teaching the ACX Masterclass this summer in a home study format where, you know, we know you've got things to do in life. You can take it at your own pace. It's gonna be across four weeks, but you can take as much or as little time as you want. And we'll show you how to build a successful and profitable audiobook narration business on ACX. And we're gonna make VoiceOver Body Shop viewers a very special offer, and it's just for you. You don't tell anybody about it. Right on the front page of the site, on acxmasterclass.com, we're offering a special two-payment plan to make it easier on your cash flow and a special price. Two payments, one this month, one next month, and then we start the class in June. No finance charges. No extra fees. Just click on the link on the front page. You will pay the lowest price anyone will pay for the class this year. We guarantee that. Don't wait. Do it now. Take advantage of this exclusive offer and get all the tools that you need to create that amazing audiobook practice you want. We'll show you how. This is a limited time offer. We're going to take this link down this coming Friday night. Go to acxmasterclass.com. That's acxmasterclass.com. And click on the link that says for VOBS viewers only to take advantage of this two payment, no finance charge, no extra fee offer just for you. That's acxmasterclass.com. Thank you, guys. Thanks, David. Go to acxmasterclass.com now as the two-payment offer ends this Friday, May 3rd. As a voice talent, you have to have a website. But what a hassle getting someone to do it for you. And when they finally do, they break or don't look right on mobile devices. They're not built for marketing and SEO. They're expensive. You have limited or no control. And it takes forever to get one built and go live. So what's the best way to get you online in no time? Go to voiceactorwebsites.com. Like our name implies, voiceactorwebsites.com just does websites for voice actors. We believe in creating fast, mobile-friendly, responsive, highly functional designs that are easy to read and easy to use. You have full control. No need to hire someone every time you want to make a change. And our upfront pricing means you know exactly what your costs are ahead of time. You can get your voiceover website going for as little as $700. So if you want your voice actor website without the hassle of complexity and dealing with too many options, go to voiceactorwebsites.com, where your VO website shouldn't be a pain in the you-know-what. Well, hello there. I bet you weren't expecting to hear some big-voiced announcer guy on your new orientation training for Snapchat, were you? This is Virgin Radio. Well, okay, we're not that innocent. There's jeans for wearing and there's jeans for working. Diggies. 
because I ain't here to look pretty. She's a champion of progressive values, a leader for California, and a voice for America. It's smart. It's a phone. It's a smartphone. But it's so much more. It's a, the files are ready. Don't forget to pick up the eggs. What time is hockey practice? Check out this song. It's the end of the road for Rick. It's just you and me, Rick. When hope is lost. The I-8 from BMW. Who said saving the planet couldn't be stylish? Hey, it's J. Michael Collins. Bet you think I'm going to try and sell you a demo now, huh? I think they speak for themselves. But I will give you my email. It's jmichael at jmcvoiceover.com. Now, if Dan will stop waxing his mustache for a minute, we'll get back to the show. VOBS is still on? Seriously? And we are back with Harlan Hogan. What are you drinking? I'm drinking water out of this fabulous Canada cup. There's a story there, but you don't want to hear it. Okay. <laughs> Does it take long to get a cup shipped to, from Canada to Chicago? No, I picked it up on a motorcycle. You're going to get the story anyway. Oh, I, did a sorry. Well, I did a motorcycle <laughs> trip when you go all the way around Lake Superior. and came through Thunder Bay, and I, and, and I hadn't bought anything. It was on a motorcycle for six days. So I stopped, and I picked this up, and I come through customs in Thunder Bay, and a nice lady came out the bike and i got my helmet and all that stuff and she says hi how long have you been gone six days what'd you do i rode around lake superior went through all these places in canada oh good for you yeah we had a lot of people through here that do that and, um are you bringing anything back i said no nothing at all i said well just this canadian coffee cup she said oh are you married i said yeah <laughs> You are in such. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was the best. <laughs> You're in hell. <laughs> anyway, you you wanted to tell all our viewers about uh, a big deal you got coming up at VoiceOverEssentials.com. Do tell. I, I do. I do. Do to all kinds of crazy things with tariffs and, and inventory control and everything else. We ran out of Porta Booth Pluses. For those of you who don't know the line, there's the Portable Pro, which is the larger one. And uh, we also have the Portable Plus, which is the smaller one. And the Pluses are very popular, easy to travel with. And we simply ran out of them, which just killed me. And then you deal with getting them manufactured and then trying to get them before Lunar Christmas mm. because all of China takes off for like a month. And so we went through all this drill. We've been waiting, waiting, waiting with a lot of people saying, you know, I, you know, when will the pluses be back? So we started a waiting list. We have a number of people on there who were nice enough to say, yeah, you want a deposit? No, I don't want a deposit. I'll just put your name here. You know? So they just arrived. And we, were, of course, got them out to the people on the waiting list immediately. And I decided, you know, we're kind of like reintroducing it. It's, it's Porter Booth Plus 4.0. I always make, I think most manufacturers do, you make incremental little changes based on feedback. So certain little things, minor stuff that you say, okay, I'll make that strap a little tighter, change the geometry a little bit, but essentially it's unchanged. And uh, I thought it would be nice to reward people who were waiting for one or who wanted to get one with something that I, it's unprecedented for me, but I, I think it's fun. So first of all, there's the Porta Booth. Let's get that on the video, okay? Plus, if you're not familiar with it, this is it's hard to do that on camera because it is, I, isn't it? I yeah. See myself. But anyway, this is this is the device. It folds up. It takes about six to eight seconds to put it together. It's one of the yeah, things give we give or made. take ten or fifteen seconds. Yeah. Yeah. And I, we added some, you know, it's funny that you do. So yeah, this is a little tight. So you got a little gusset to it and you make a few changes. So we have those. And it's uh, despite economic trade things with China, the price stays the same. It's one eighty nine. We ship it free and anywhere in the contiguous United States. But, oh, okay, what can well we could knock something off? And I thought, you know, what would be really neat is to give something away. And one of the other items we have that I love is this. Oh, the bag's great. Is the bag is this Porta Booth Plus bag? The people 
who makes this make this for us. I mean, this is their business is is luggage and travel things. When you go through O'Hare or whatever, and you see all these little things that, uh, you know, the neck things you can put your head on, and all these various travel items. This company makes ninety nine percent of those things under various brands. So when I said I need a, a bag to be- develop, they t- this thing is just killer, and you know it holds your, your booth in the center section. The what. what because it is a true carry-on bag, we designed it so that these pouches on the outside can be opened without opening the bag, where you've got your booth or your clothes, for that matter, and your microphone and all that. And then also had these outer pouches, and there's two zippered pouches here, and then these outer pouches. I have observed many times while traveling that, uh, you know, it's, it's dicey when you open up the overhead to get something out of your carry-on bag. I mean, I've seen people get hit on the head. Oh, I almost did it yesterday. Funny, but, but it is funny. So I thought, oh, okay, okay, okay. So if we got this thing up in that in that area, if you have those outside pouches, you can get at the things you know you're going to need while you're on the trip and not disturb the stuff in the center. So they did a great job with these. They're fifty nine ninety nine. Mm-hmm. What we're doing is for the first fifty people. And by the way, VOBS. Viewers, are, you're the first to know about this. The only other people who know about it are the people who, who have already are receiving, the people who are on the waiting list receive their booth with the travel bag as a gift. Ooh. So we've got a limit of 50, you, um, you're limiting it to two per customer. Because if I don't do that, somebody will buy 50 and go into competition with me, which I don't need. <laughs> so <laughs> trust me. People will be scalping so, these things. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So and then that's very simple. That's it. Tomorrow, John Florian's going to send out a mailer. Um, I think they go pretty fast. So if, you, if you're interested, I would do it. Yeah. If yeah. you go to voiceoveressentials.com, now we're not doing it on Amazon or any other site. There's a little, little button to click. Both items will come, but you just pay for one of them. Yeah. See, and I'll tell you, if that bag, twice, once once in Boston and once in San Francisco, I've had people walk up to me and say, Hi, what's a tra- what's a what, what, what's a porta booth? And I'd say, Well, I make a little portable audio thing. Is it, well, I like the bag. Can I could I <laughs> can I buy just the bag? Well, you know me. I said, sure, sure no yeah. problem. Here's my number. <laughs> right said, off your shoulder? I know. <laughs> <laughs> Underwear it, and all, you know. I use it. You know what? I'm, I'm a sailor. You guys know that. I've got, <laughs> Leslie hasn't thrown all of them away. I've probably got 25 duffel bags, you know, embroidered with races or sailing trips I've been on or whatever. And even when I go on a sailing trip, that's the bag I take. I mean, it's so well done. And I didn't design it, so I'm not bragging about me. These people really knew what they were doing. And really? it's got every little feature you'd want. So and it weighs nothing and it's bulletproof. Yeah. So what's the, what's the special that you're you're doing with this? Once again. Here's the special. If you if you buy a Porta Booth Plus, you will get the travel bag for free. Yeah. And that that's the advantage of watching our show live exactly because you'll be you're watching live, live and you've got first dibs on this thing 50 of them. just yeah. there's no promo code if you just go to voiceoveressentials.com click on it it'll come ship up. outstanding and of course those yeah. of you who yeah, are watching I think it's kind of fun right if you're watching the replay oh well well that maybe there'll be still some. be some left might you never some. Take a look. i think yeah, they'll I mean, go fast we'll obviously post it when when they're gone but uh yeah, yeah that's all right doing. we got some questions from our audience which Ooh, is good. watching live, and they've all already gone to your website and bought the uh, the Porta Booth and the uh, the bag. Pilar Uribe's with us tonight, joining us from Miami. She just happens to be in L.A., and she has a question for you. Hi, Harlan. Can you see me? Hi. Hi. Yeah. Hi. So I was uh, at WovoCon, the mini conference, this past weekend with Dan, and uh, J.S. Gilbert was giving away uh, your Porta Booth, and my friend and roommate Natasha Marchevka won it, and I had major Porta Booth envy. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I like that. Go ahead, <laughs> write that one down. Because I was just, I was like, oh my gosh, it's it's perfect. I mean, the whole pillows and the fort thing, it's okay, except that it just, I mean, the other day I was basically under um, an ironing board, and I had the 
quilts and I was I was like this and I was like this. It was just it was horrendous and I thought about the party booth. So my question to you is where does like when you're hanging up your your microphone where would you like would would you have the tripod would you have a ninja and did with the ninja attach to the porta booth that's my question what's the easiest way to ha put the put the microphone uh, place the microphone inside the porta booth okay are <clears throat> you using you talked about and I have a Sennheiser. Up. Sorry, I didn't interrupt. I have a Sennheiser 416. So my idea oh, okay. is to go. Oh, kind of I got gotcha. you. Like okay, okay. Here, here you go. This is this is what you use. <laughs> the Sennheiser 416. Yeah. Which I happen to have here right now. Um, a desk stand, preferably with a round bottom desk stand. Okay. okay. I don't. I don't like the tripods because you try to balance that on uh, on foam, it'll fall over. It's not a good idea. Um, on the Pro and the Plus, both of them have a zipper, a double zipper on the back. So you can take the aft end, the back end of the Sennheiser 416, where the XLR connector is, out yeah. through there in the cable. We've really designed it around the idea of a shotgun mic. So a desk stand is really stable. The other thing we do in both the booths, the bottom foam is pre-slit for you. Oh. And what it enables you to do, and I'll pick this up, is take this base and slide it through that slit. So now the base is fitting, is sitting on a solid surface, not on the foam, because on the foam it can fall over. It's just not, not good. Right. So, yeah, it's, it's really simple. And little, any desk stand, you know, that's round like that will work. Work very well, actually, and is very stable for that. And 416 sound terrific in, in the boots. Yeah, it was really designed for that too. I mean, we it really was originally because I at home. I mean, the four sixteen to me can can be harsh, and um, you know, it's got an edgy sound to it. It's great yeah. for political stuff for me. I sometimes don't like it on some female voices because it can get a little muddy, but it just depends on the person. But for travel and for noise reduction, it's hard to beat this thing. I mean, and and they God, they're bulletproof. Oh, yeah. You know, the only time I've ever had a problem traveling is when you occasionally get someone in TSA who thinks it's some kind of a weapon or some strange device. You know, because they, right. they think microphones is like, you know, PA microphones. And they go, well, what's this? And I was that guy pulling, he said, what's this? I said, it's a microphone. He started singing into it. <laughs> People do the weirdest things around microphones. Oh, sorry, no one's listening. So, yeah, I'll have one. I'll I'll, I'll take one. Dollar microphone. Don't spit in it. Stop. <laughs> we got a question from one? Harlan. I I will um I'll, I'll have what he's having. <laughs> there you go. Okay. All right. So please save one for me. Okay. You got it. All right. Question from Hugh Murrow. Yes. Hugh Mara says from Facebook, um, Harlan, what's the biggest up and coming markets in voiceover? In your, he's got two questions. That's the first one. We I knew. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> if we, if we all knew. <laughs> yeah, sure. Let's get out our crystal ball and. Yeah. Boy, I don't know. I've, I've had a few good guesses over the years, but not not many. You yeah. know, I don't know. I know. I'm, I'm just learning about more about the you know the the game thing you know, and the the. Going to if you're a known game voice, going to these shows and making money, you know, signing autographs. And I thought, God, it's right back to radio when you got a pizza trade. It's the same. It's the same thing, you know. Like we're not going to pay you, but you can go to this conference and make some money. You know, I honestly, honestly, I know the union has has got a new contract proposed that actually I think they really have realized that the advertising has changed it's not disappeared it's just changed and and I, we all know that the delivery systems change radically and prices have to change too it just does um, books seem to recorded books are you know through the roof in terms of of success I just wish they were more lucrative um, for the amount of time that you put in yeah, an Amazon influence there. And when they bought audio, uh, Audible, you know, kind of you know, think, okay, you're going to be an audio engineer now after you've read for 12 hours right. and spent 36 hours editing this thing. Yeah. And that's why I honestly don't do them. I'd love to do books. Have you done anything with VR? That was another thing Hugh said um, medical VR, which would be virtual reality, probably. Yeah. 
motorcycle. Ooh, ooh that would be cool. I'm doing that. I just yeah. did a motorcycle course the other day, but you know, <laughs> don't kill yourself. Thank you for visiting. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, in the and the and the artificial intelligence combined with with voice is going to happen well. If you if you've gone up to, to the Amazon site and listened to some of the stuff that they've done, it it is it is extraordinarily good because they really have sampled humans and they've put mouth noises and you know things we work to try to get rid of you know they're well, putting them in yeah they put them in it in breaths which is one of my complaints about please don't be breath stuff people talk and the breath just said i'm thinking didn't it say and, and you don't take that out otherwise you look like an idiot if you go up <laughs> yeah but but their algorithms put breaths in, mouth noises, you know, slight little things. It's it's, it's it reminds me very much of when synthesized music first came on the scene. And oh, there's not going to be any musicians anymore. And the music was too perfect, if you'll recall. It was it didn't sound right. And uh, so I don't see it as a major threat, but I think that you would see a time when a lot of the the nonfiction narrative will be done by computers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, well. Yeah. Jack Daniel has a question. We miss you, Jack. You got to come by here Jack more. Daniel. Yeah, oh, really. Go ahead. This is Harlan. First, thank you for supporting this show and voiceover people everywhere. We truly appreciate it. His question's about your sound in a changing market. You're well known for politicals, among much else. And I'm wondering whether you find that the buyers for your sound change over time, as opposed to you chasing the trends. I mean, do you find that different buyers are finding different uses for your style, than was the case in the past. Oh, absolutely. And I, one of the things I've, I've seen, because I've been at this for, since, nine, well, I, my union card is 1976, so 42 plus years, is that you, you can't, don't chase a style. I had a very good friend, I still, I mean, he's still a friend, but he really went after a very popular sound at the time. And that was Hal Reine. And he did Hal Reine great. And he, he did well for a while, but, you know, Hal Reine died, first of all. But aside from that, um, then the style changed. And despite this guy's talent, real talent, he really did get typecast in an odd way. And he had some very difficult years. I mean, he's done much better since then. But all anybody thought of is, oh, he does a great Hal Reine. You want to do a great you. You, you that's your brand that's what you sound like so it's it definitely don't chase it i think that's a huge mistake but change yes always look down the road what you know what what, what what's coming and, and and how are you changing I mean, my voice is way different than it was when i started at 29 i couldn't begin to do some of the things i can do now and i like that and i'm just thrilled when they say senior citizen about 45. You know, <laughs> yeah, they, most of them think we died 10 years ago. I mean, oh, I just love yeah. that. We want a weathered voice, one that's been around a long time, maybe a little bit of Texas in it. He's seen everything there is. Yeah. One tough cookie. 20 to 20. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, you, you'd have to smoke a lot of Marlboros. You, you can't do that. <laughs> it is funny, though. When you see that. I'm like, yeah. what are you, 12? Yes, you're 12. Okay, that's fine. But yeah. just ignore that stuff. Yeah. And I, I think it's important to embrace when you are young that you will not be young forever. And that's not a bad thing. I saw so many of my competitors and friends who were in the general say, same age range honestly kind of just disappear from the business. They really didn't change and say, okay, well, I've been the young dad or the young salesman. Now I've got to think about being the father. And then the grandfather, and then Lazarus, but <laughs> and then Methuselah, and then Methuselah. Right, exactly. <laughs> but I think that's smart. Uh, I think you know you've got embrace that, and you know if you just sit and go, well, yeah, but I do this, you know, this great thirty-year-old, and you're now sixty. Come on, <laughs> even if you can sound like you're thirty, you don't think like you're thirty. No, that's totally different. It's totally George, different. Yeah, George has the last question. Aha. Yeah, this kind of dovetails into the tech side of things a little bit more, but um, how did you decide on the sound of the new cans, the new headphones that I'm wearing? Because mm -hmm. they're quite different from the other ones. Um, these 
compare a lot more closely to a lot of the other headphones that I use, reg you know, regularly. So they're they're, mm -hmm. they're more familiar. So, what kind of feedback did you get? And then did you have to, did you use others as a reference? How did how did you land on it when there's a gajillion freaking ways a headphone sound? I mean, I know, I know, I know. And I and I liked what we did originally, but I like these even better. I mean, yeah, what you were doing I, with the original one was to, to, to reinvent the sound of a headphone, which yeah. has pros and cons, right? Pros right. and that um, was voiced really well, well, well for voiceover. We, we may have gone a little overboard in the first time. What are real truth tellers? I want yeah. to really hear every single flaw, but right. a lot of really, it's off putting for them. Right. So too much input. Yeah, in a way, we went too much video. Mm -hmm. and, and that's in versus film. And as uh, Mike King, who was, who was the dean of recording engineers here in Chicago, when we were talking about, about two microphones, and specifically the U47s. And he said, you know, the U47 is flawed. It's really flawed. It's not as accurate as any of the microphones of today. But like film, we like the flaw. We like the softness. We like that little sound. So I kind of backed off being quite so harsh with it. And it's, the feedback's been terrific. Uh, I think people like them a little bit more. And then we also added the, you know, the jack here, which was a great idea. Yeah. So when, when you step on the cord, and you will, this will pull out and not ruin your headphones. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that does happen. That is right. nice. Yeah. Either you guys stepped on a cord and pulled. I have a couple Heck times, yeah. and they weren't mine, which is embarrassing. Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. It's not easy to solder. But I oh, think yeah. that that. I will. I mean, I'll say like if you're used to using some of the other usual suspects and headphones, the big ones, Sony, uh, Sony Audio Technica, these mm -hmm. are going to be more familiar. I mean, because again, I use all of them. These yeah. you can put on; they're going to sound a little more familiar to you, be easier to adapt to them, mm -hmm. and um, and yeah, they're super comfortable. And having the aren't they? Leather yeah, I've got to wear these for hours and hours and hours, which I like. Now the yeah. leather's nice. Yeah. yeah, and we did. Now we're able to because that that was one thing. Leather will wear out faster than vinyl obviously well the vinyl wears out eventually too if you ever remember, remember being on a plane and i had some bose noise cancelers and yeah. back to the bathroom or came back out and, and my wife leslie said what's all over your face yeah <laughs> you're right. black yeah don't you love when women do stuff like that? you're gonna wear that yeah <laughs> Yeah, no. yeah, you're gonna. Well, yeah, you're. A, <laughs> no, right. no, I just put it on to see, you know. Hey, I'm not. But I, I still go. I look, I look, I look black stuff all over. Well, the vinyl degrades after time. Yeah, but leather will go faster. So now we we do have replacement. Great, yeah. great, fantastic. Yeah, but they won't so, flake out on you. <laughs> That's the important. You know, and we have point. replacement cords too. That's yeah. right. Good, fabulous. Well, Harlan, it is always a pleasure to talk to you, whether in person or on our show here. And uh, thanks for the great deal. Once again, what's the big deal that you're you're doing with the uh, the okay. Porta booths? If you order the Porta booth plus 4.0, the new one, because we have none of the old ones. Believe me, I've got like one. Uh, you will get free the carry on travel booth bag. You can't beat that deal. All right, Harlan. Thanks for being with us. Hey, thank you. You guys are great. All right, we appreciate you, and you, you and thank you for being our sponsor for all these years. May you continue to do so for another okay. eight to ten years. That would be great. All right, Harlan Hogan, everybody. Your dynamic voiceover career requires extra resources to keep moving ahead. Now there's one place where you can explore everything the voiceover industry has to offer. That place is voiceoverextra.com. Whether you're just exploring a voiceover career or a seasoned veteran ready to reach that next professional level, stay in touch with market trends, coaching, products and services while avoiding scams and other pitfalls. Voiceover Extra has hundreds of articles, free resources and training that will save you time and help you succeed. Learn from the most respected talents, coaches, and industry insiders when you join the online sessions bringing you the most current information on topics like audiobooks, auditioning, casting, home studio setup and equipment, marketing, performance techniques, and much more. It's time to hit your one-stop daily resource for voiceover success. Sign up for a free subscription to newsletters and reports and get 14 bonus reports on how to ace the voiceover audition. It's all here at voiceoverextra.com. That's voiceoverxtra.com. Um... Well, it's that time of the show where we get to talk about our great sponsors, Source Elements. 
Yep, you've heard of them, Source Elements. They make Source Connect, and that's a tool you need to have in your toolbox if you're a voice actor who's you know really working at home. You're making a living now. You know it's starting to go. You know you're transitioning from from being a part time to full time. Maybe you've landed an agent. Maybe you're joining the union. All these things, kind of stuff that says I'm working at a higher level. Source Connect is definitely something you should have ready to go. Um, what's cool with Source Connect is you don't have to make any investment right now. You can get go sign up, get go through the hoops of setting it up. There's a few things to deal with with using an iLock account. You don't need the iLock key, but you have to have the account set up. Just a few things to to jump through and get it up and running. But once you do, just get the demo going. You can get a 15 day free trial. Once you have it ready to go, it's sitting on your machine. It's installed. You know it works. You're comfortable with it. Then when the client comes and says, you need to have Source Connect, activate the license right on the spot. You can do it online. You can do a, a buyout license for one fee, or you can do a, a monthly subscription type pay. Um, subscription means you get ongoing support and upgrades for the entire time you are a subscriber. So it's a pretty smart way to go. Um, anyway, if you want to go check them out, go to source-elements.com. Sign up to Source Connect. It's the best, most solid, most reliable, and best-sounding way to connect your studio to other studios around the world. You should give them a try. Are you confused about how to set up and maintain a professional quality voiceover studio? No wonder. The information out there is mostly mythology. This is the best microphone to use. You have to have a preamp. You need a soundproof booth. This software is the best. Your audio must be broadcast quality. Consult with someone who knows the truth. Someone who's been there, in the trenches, doing voiceover for over 30 years. Someone with unparalleled experience with voiceover studios, who's worked with hundreds of voice actors and designed hundreds of personal studios. He knows how to teach and cares about your success. In one of the harshest environments known to voiceover, your home. Dan Leonard, the home studio master. Separate myth from fact and get a handle on your personal voiceover studio. Contact the home studio master at homevoiceoverstudio.com. Ooh, I think I heard the voice of a body shop. I did. I did hear the voice of a body shop. Beetle body shop. Okay, who are our donors of the week? All righty, donors of the week. Yeah, I made up a list right here. Um, we've got donations from Antland Productions. Uncle Roy. Shauna Pennington Baird. Joseph Valentinetti. Valentinetti, sorry, Joseph. Uh, Stephanie Sutherland. Diana Birdsall. Petty Gibbons. Petty, Petty, did I say Petty? Patty Gibbons. Patty Gibbons. Amanda Fellows. George Whittem, that's my dad. Uh, Shelly Avellino voiceovers. Thanks, Shelly. Uh, great seeing Shelly this weekend uh, in San Francisco. She's, oh, cool. She's the life of the party. She <laughs> goes way back with us. Thomas Pinto, Brian Page, Tremaine Mosley, Philip Sapir, CJ Ringwall voiceovers, Sarah Borges, Michelle Blanker. Wasn't she the uh, winner of the yes, Unicorn Award? She was. She was. At VO Atlanta. Yeah. And a doctor voice. Thank you very much. That's a doctor a voice. A doctor voice. Yes. That's Nathan Carlson. Uh, I, I figured it was Dr. Carlson. <laughs> hey, show us your booths. Yeah. Who is this? This was uh, Jim Hawthorne or Mike Hawthorne. Mike Hawthorne. Sent it to us in landscape. It's a perfect portrait. example of what we look for for the show. We want to see what your booths look like. Yeah. And Twisted wave, it looks like. Uh, yeah. No, that's, that's audition. Oh, no, I'm sorry. That's audition. I'm looking or at the big audition. screen now. Yeah, that's audition. He's got the spectral view. Yep. What else is yeah. in there? And lots of foam, which Mackie, looks like an Iron Maiden. Mackie monitors. I uh, can't mm. quite see the mic, but... Uh, okay, cool. Very nice. All right. Once again, you want to work with George, you go to... GeorgeTheTech.com. And if you want to work with me, go over to HomeVoiceOverStudio.com. But, yeah, we talk to each other every now and again. Do we dare announce who's on next week? We do. Because, well, not next week, next week, but in two weeks. The next next live show. show, we will have David H. Lawrence, the 17th, will be joining us. And uh, he has lots of cool stuff to talk about. He's an entertaining guy. Entertaining, Smart, great actor. A little ha scary looking. Um, and that's the guys he plays on TV. <laughs> Uh, we love you, David. That's right. Uh, let's see. Remember, we're on, on alternate Mondays. Now, we'll be on in two weeks, but we'll have... 
Tech Talk on next week. Mm-hmm. The interview with Harlan all this week, and that's mm-hmm. that's important. Uh, if you want to be in our studio, like lovely Pilar here is, just write to us at the guys at vobs.tv and tell us so. Da, da, da. Mm. There she is. Okay, look, at, look how comfortable she is. I know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, we need to thank our sponsors, of course. Harlan Hogan's VoiceOver Essentials. Mm-hmm. VoiceOver Extra. Uh, source Elements. Video to go go. Voice Actor Websites.com. And J. Michael Collins Demos. All right. Still also, sending us money. He did it because. They like what we like what he does. He likes what we do. And you guys all love what he you does. You guys must be telling him. You guys must be telling them where you're, where they're coming from, I know. because we, you know, if that's what you're doing, we appreciate it. Yes, yeah. that that really helps our sponsors stick around. I know. I just cut a new demo with Michael. Awesome. And it sounds awesome. What kind? What type? Stuff? And it's an announcer demo. No way. <laughs> way coming back to like you know. Well, back thought, to your roots. They keep saying it's out. Well, it's, then it's a niche, so I might as well try and fill the niche. That's very good point. Yeah. And that was well, kind of like I think what, uh, Harlan. what what Harlan was talking yeah. about. Jack asked him about. Yeah. You know, if you stick around long enough and be good at something, it all comes back around. Boom. All righty. Yeah. We also need to thank the Dan and Marcy Leonard Foundation for the betterment of live webcasting. Mm-hmm. Our producer, Catherine Curtin, who's out for a little while, but, you know, we're making do for the time being. Mike Merlino on Chatroom Duty did a great job tonight. And, of course, his mom, who is our director, Sue Merlino, are Yay! doing a great job of making it all perfect tonight. And, of course, Lee Penny for being Lee Penny. Well, that's going to do it for us this week. Uh, join us every Monday or whatever you want because you can watch any episode anytime on our Facebook page, on YouTube, on just go to our homepage. It's and all the podcast there. version, and of course, which is now many of you listen on podcast, which is now on Spotify. We stuck it on there. I haven't even searched yet, but it's supposedly it's there. Okay, look on your phone. while you wrap up the show. I'm going to look and search right now. All right, well, that's going to do it for us here on Voiceover Body Shop. Thanks for joining us. And, uh, Roar, this isn't an easy business. The technical part of it, we want to help it make it. We want to help make it seamless. So you just hit record. Because when it sounds good, it is good. All right. Have a great week, everybody. We'll see you next time here on VoiceOver Body Shop. I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver Body Shop. Or V-O-B-S. Bye. See you later.